Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of stampwithnilly.com and in my blog yesterday I shared this card that I have used the Banner Year stamp which has lots of lovely little um, images and sentiments for right throughout the whole year and I've used the little holly leaves and the berries stamp from that set and created my own designer series paper. I've used shaded spruce and real red for um, this design. And because I like this card that I shared yesterday so much, I've decided that I want to make a coordinating little gift box to go with it. So I'm gonna stamp some more off that paper and I've got half a sheet of A4 Whisper White and I am just going to essentially fill this with the little leaves in shaded spruce and little berries in real red so um, I'm just gonna as I say just fill the space as much as I need to with these images doesn't have to be precise just give that impression of a lovely sheet of designer series paper and as always I will kind of go over the edge as well just so that it doesn't look um, too manufactured, too, too strange that it all fits in nice and neatly. I will be chopping this up as well so um, there will be bits where you maybe don't get too much of the red berries or, or whatever so Today's project is part of a first ever project share blog haul. Each Thursday, um, myself and three friends do a project share. And this means that on a Thursday we will show projects that have been created by the other three people in the group. This time we've decided that once a month we will take that a bit further and we will each create a brand new project to share and we will have a theme. So this month's theme for our first ever one is Christmas. So once you've had a look at my video or read my blog please make sure that you follow the links to visit Jez of Nigeza and Verity of Inky Butterfly and Jill of Paper Daisy Crafting. And if you follow my blog, you will know that I share their projects, as I say, every Thursday, but I sometimes share extra ones where I have been influenced by something that they have created. So bear with me whilst I finish stamping all of these lovely leaves and fill up this piece of paper. Well you should be glad that I didn't make you sit and watch all of that process because it's actually gotten dark um, from when I started. <laughs> Not that that means much during the winter time in Scotland. We don't get a huge amount of um, sunlight in any case. I 
you may have noticed that I swapped up from a smaller block to a larger one for the berries and that's because I have got myself covered in ink <laughs> which is also nothing new really um, so there we have it I have both a piece of Whisper White covered in holly and berries pattern and my fingers covered in ink. <laughs> um, I'm going to quickly use some hand sanitizer and see if that uh, will help. But you may notice that um, there are a couple of bits on this that I have misstamped and it's just trying to, to be quicker than I really needed to be. Um, so well, that worked. Not too bad. Um, so yeah, there, there's a couple of bits that are not stamped particularly well and I've transferred a little bit of ink um, that shouldn't be there on a couple of bits as well. But when I chop it up and when I use it to decorate my project, then um, hopefully you won't actually notice that. So what am I going to make with it? That's the next question. I'm going to make a box for a little Christmas candle. Um, so I've got myself a piece of real red paper, card even. Get my paper trimmer and I want this to be eight and a half inches by six inches. And I can use those bits for something else later on. bring in my Simply Scored and on the long side which is the eight and a half side I want to score this at two inches, four inches, six inches and eight inches. Twist that round and score at two inches, four inches and five and a quarter. I'm going to pop it back round and I'm going to score at three inches but just down to that first horizontal score line there. So do that at three inches and at seven inches. So I've just taken that down to that horizontal score line there. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah. Okay, that's all I need the scoring board for. I'm going to bring in my ruler and I'm going to score from that three inch mark down to the corner of the next score line. Hopefully you can see that. And the same in the opposite direction. And this is going to be a milk carton box and these bits here, these diagonal um, score lines will just help the side of that box. Okay, nice and easy. So just did the same on uh, those two bits there. I'm just going to reinforce all of these lines. Just making sure that I've got that nice and straight before I press it into play. Now, I want to do these two as normal, but the top one I want to fold back on itself. So that you end up with that kind of shape at the top there. I'm going to use my larger scissors and I want to cut straight up that score line there and 
do that at each of these ones and just up to that top score line there. Same again with this one at the end. I also want to take a little notch out of there and a little notch off the top there as well. Okay, so that forms the basis of our box. Bear with me while I chop this up to get pieces to decorate these panels here. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so I still have a big chunk of the paper left over and there were a couple of bits that I decided not to use because I'd over stamped or I hadn't stamped properly but there's not a huge amount of waste um, but I can use this other piece either for an, another box, maybe even two or another one of the cards like this so I shall decide on exactly what I wanted to do but given that I was getting inky anyway it was as well just to go ahead and do the whole lot. So I've got four pieces that measure um, one and three quarter inch square for the front panels and I've also got two that are one and three quarter inches by one inch for the top panels. So I'm just going to Add these on with glue. I apologise that the uh, I've got a bit of shadow and the the light's not fabulous, but um, there's not an awful lot more I can do. Um, <laughs> it, 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 there was a little bit of daylight left when I started <laughs> but not much I'm just lining that up with a fairly even margin around those panels I hope you agree that those tiny little stamps really do make for really pretty patterned paper, um, even if it does take a little while to to stamp because they are so small. I think it's worthwhile. I like it. And there we are. That's our panels all decorated. Okay, so to assemble the box itself, I am going to add some glue to that piece there. And I can simply fold that over and press that down. Just run my bone folder over it, make sure I've got it nice and secure. And I just like to fold it the other way and press down as well. Okay, so that is the back of our box with the um, join there. So I'm going to fold in the two sides. I'm going to fold the back forward and then finally I am going to fold the front panel backwards. So with the join at the back there, I've got the front of my box here and I've got a nice round piece there with no joins. All the joins are at the back there. My little Christmas scented candle can go in there. And now I just have to decide what I want to do to finish off the decoration. I am 
going to close the box with some of this gorgeous double satin, double stitched satin ribbon even. Um, I'm going to use my crocodile to punch a couple of holes to feed that through. By using these guides, it makes sure that your holes are the same distance from the side. Nice and easy. Now I've forgotten which bit was. This is the front. <laughs> pop the ribbon through there. scissors just to chop that off. We'll attempt a bow. Perfect. I might play about with it before I take photos, but it's not too bad. Um, I will trim the tails when I'm happy with the bow. So I want a sentiment on there, and there are um, a couple of Christmas sentiments in here, but I think I want to use the itty bitty Christmas stamp set and as I used the Christmas wishes and from all of us on the card I thought I might use either from our house to yours or the very merry I might go very merry why not let's do that one if I can find it very merry. There we are, right in the middle. And it's a rather large block, but never mind. Oops. I did have a piece of wispy white. This is rather large, but so I'm going to, I've got lots of the real red on there. I'm going to do the sentiment with shaded spruce. Like that. Upside down, obviously. And I am going to die cut that with one of the layering squares dies. Yeah, that's a nice size. Oh, do I want mm, mm. I could potentially do it that way. Yeah, why not? Why not indeed? Bear with me and I shall just die cut that just now. Okay, so I have die cut that and I've also die cut a larger one of the layering squares using some real red. And I think um, instead of layering them that way, all very standard, I thought I would layer them that way. 
just for something a little bit different. So let's just do that. What I'll do is add the real red square in there, first of all. And then I can add on the very merry. I like that. I like that a lot. So, final touch. Once I've trimmed off those ribbons as well, is to add in a little bit of bling. And I think I will use the red rhinestones for that. One there. there and yeah we'll go there there we are there we have it so we have a coordinating christmas card and little gift box that would be lovely for a gift for family, friends, neighbours, whatever you wish. I will tidy up my bow and take pictures. You'll be able to see them on my blog. The blog will also have links to the blogs for the other ladies taking part in our Project Share blog hop. And we'll also have all of the dimensions for my box, should you wish to make your own version. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.